Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Nate Trash. Right there. Welcome back to another episode of Trash Talk. Before we start, we got a new supporters list. This is people who have been nice enough to support the show. If you want to support the show, send me a message on Instagram. Send me a message on Facebook. Send me a message anywhere. And uh, I'll to explain to you how. I haven't really set up... Uh, a proper like site for it or anything. So the best way to support is to send me a message. I'll send you details or you can even just subscribe right here on Twitch. All right. Uh, hey, how you doing? Good buddy. Doing good. Just give me a second here and I'll pop you yeah. in bro. Thank you yeah, so hold much. Hold on one second for me as well. Here, let me just grab this thing or two. Deadly. That's Cam. Uh, he's jumping in. He's already in. We're just going to go through these sponsors here and then we'll uh, bring him into the show as well. So, Let's go over here. Oh, shit. Pushing the wrong buttons. All right. So, like I said, we got a new uh, we got a new supporter list. We're going to go through those supporters. We're going to run through the sponsors. We'll jump into this show. Thank you all again so much for joining us, Cam. Thank you so much for joining. And, uh, yeah, this is looking to, be a, looking to be a good stream. Very stoked. Very stoked. So... All right, so let's get the supporters list out here. First and foremost, we're partnered with South Prairie Shirt Company. Uh, we're partnered with Apply Within Audio out of Lethbridge. We are partnered with Octave Studios in Medicine Hat, Armstrong Metal Fest, Loud as Hell Festival, Decimate, Art, Decimate Fest Metal Fest, Intersect Arts and Music Festival, Mountain Bistro and Pizzeria Bragg Creek, Camp Misfit Clothing. Uh, we have our supporters list. Right here, which seems to be getting bigger every day. I'm very stoked about that. We got Paul, Paul Messier. Paul's another musician. He uh, he makes some uh, pretty solid music online. Dan Lowy from Heavy Metal Away of Life. Shout out Dan. Happiest, our highest fuck happy hour from here in Calgary. They're uh, large proponents of uh, of cannabis culture, cannabis regulation, cannabis activism. Yaro Korchigan from uh, Liquor Store. That's a band, not the actual liquor store. Although, you know, I like my t my tequilas. Uh, let's keep on rolling. Leanne McLeod from the FM40s podcast here in Calgary. Shout out to Leanne. Bert Cardoza. Shout out Bert. Dan, vocalist of Hooker Spit. Thank you so much for the support, Dan. We got Cat. Cat, thank you for your support as well. Cat is a huge fan of the underground music here. And then we got Mouse and Cap. Thank you both, Mouse and Cap. Your support is greatly appreciated. Before we start, we'd like to acknowledge that this podcast is founded, recorded, and broadcast from Treaty 7 territory, part of the Black, or Treaty 7 lands, part of the Blackfoot territory. So thank you so much for joining us. Let's jump into this. Welcome back to another episode of Trash Talk. Cam, how are you doing, buddy? I'm, I'm doing great. great. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Who are we going to talk, talk trash, trash on today? today? So that's the thing is I, I'm Nate Trash, and I talk a lot. Like, I figure if I stop talking, I might die. But I don't <laughs> actually talk shit about anyone. Okay. I didn't say that. That was just, just pulling my leg. <laughs> that's actually a lie. When we do have our cringe streams and I get really agitated about having to force myself through all the cringy stuff, I start talking a little bit of shit. I start talking some shit. But, uh, yeah, so a little bit of backstory here. Cam liked one of the posts on Instagram, and I jumped on there. I was like, I recognize this name. So I jumped on there. And, uh, of course, Cam is in spell. And I was like, well... I got to send this guy a thank you for checking out the stuff and see if he wants to be on the show. So, alas, here he is. Here yeah. I am. Now, we were listening to Tragic Magic before the stream starts, and I got to say, man, that is fucking deadly, deadly good stuff. Sweet. Sweet. Thank, thank you, you very much for listening. I am uh, getting some mad Angel Witch vibes coming oh, up. Yeah. Yeah. We, we love, love Angel Witch, of course. course. Me too, man. Huge Angel Witch fan. I oh, remember... I discovered that band when I was working, uh, 
uh, probably two or three years ago, I had rolled across that band and I was working at construction and it was winter out and I'm like, I need some jamming good, like old school metal to fucking get through the winter here. You did. And that song Angel Witch by Angel Witch came across and I was like, wow, the chorus of this fucking song hits. Angel Witch. Yeah. Angel. Angel. Yeah. I was like, From the album Angel Witch. Witch. So good. Yeah. And then I was like, we, so my band Horrify. I was like, all right, so we got to do, we got to do the song Horrify by Horrify off the Horrify EP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we did, we did. I was like, hell yeah, Angel Witch would be proud. Or either that or they wouldn't listen to us. <laughs> so yeah. let's, uh, let's get a little bit of backstory about yourself. Cam, sure. intro- introduce yourself. Yeah, my name's Cam. Uh, I play in a band called Spell with my brother Al. Um, we, we first started back in 2007. We were called Striker then, but we've been Spell since uh, 2013. And um, heck, we've played all across Canada and America and Europe, and uh, we just put out our fourth album. And we're just um, pretty happy to be able to continue doing what we love doing. Hell yeah, man. Now, did you change your name because of Striker here? Pretty much, yeah. So <laughs> actually, uh, us and Striker from uh, uh, Edmonton both started, I believe, in 2007. We didn't know about them at the time. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, there was the internet back then, but it wasn't like... Not as much it, as it was now. Not as much. The inter- There's more internet every day. Yeah. So like, it, it, was, it took a little while before we, we heard about them. And then eventually, when we first heard about them, we were like, oh, man, like, these guys are the same name as us. But then They're not quick, Striker. Like, They're not the Striker. We're the Striker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty quickly, uh, we realized that they uh, were were uh, much more successful than us. So, and uh, but that wasn't the only reason we changed our name. We also kind of changed it because, uh, you know, we we wanted a name that would allow us to not quite be pigeonholed as like a just exclusively like an '80s style throwback retro heavy metal band. Yeah. Um. So we feel like with the name Spell, we can pretty much play any kind of music we want to, and it'll it'll fit. You know. Yeah, definitely. And the the imagery you guys got is uh, super super deadly too. Like you guys, yeah. I'm I'm a heavy proponent of like. If you are going to create, if you're going to be in a band and you're going to set out to like create your your style and your sound around it, you have to go in with the imagery as well as the music, you know? Oh yeah, it's all part of it. That's why you can't have a bunch of dudes in sweatpants on stage. It just doesn't work. Well, and if you if you are though, you got to lean into that gimmick. Like that's got to be gimmick. yeah. <laughs> that's got to be the whole image of the band. Like hey, we are the lazy sweatpants construction workers, guys. Yeah, you, know? yeah, you could do it. You could do it. You got to lean into it, though. It's all about the show in the end. Like, if you're putting. The only rule on- is that nothing can be on accident. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. You can't play it off as like, you can't just do something and be like, oh, I guess, well, we'll see if this works or not. And then I wonder why nobody's catching on to the fact that your drummer's wearing a fucking Casey Jones mask. Okay, well, it's because he's rad. It's because my drummer's rad. <laughs> well. Um, I like your shirt too, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Very Great sick. Band. From Vancouver, formerly from, uh, Calgary. Reppin. Or Edmonton. From, formerly from Edmonton. Yeah. Sorry. Reppin. Very, yeah. very hardcore reppin. I like the records behind you too. So are you in your, is this your place right now? Yeah, this is my place. I mean, I live in, I live in Vancouver, so I live in a tiny mini school shoebox sized apartment and there's only one wall that's not <laughs> covered in like piles of crap. And it's this wall that has, is co- Covered in piles of records, so nice. I'm set, set up here. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. So, what's it like making your style of music in Vancouver? Now, I know lots of bands from Vancouver. A uh, little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, huge fan of the huge fan of the the Victoria like punk and hardcore. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's so much good stuff from Victoria. Totally. But what's yeah, it? Here too. What's it like doing your thing where you're at? Yeah. I mean. Um, when we first started, you know, back in like 2007, there was in Vancouver, there was only, there wasn't really a scene of this type of music at all. There was like, I recall there was kind of like a grindcore scene and um, that was about all we were getting for, 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 for metal. So we felt at that time, like we were really doing something, you know, cause we, at that time we loved like Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and Wasp and shit like that. Yeah. So we felt like we were doing something like, you know, pretty original by playing music that had been played 20 years earlier. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, you know, now there's kind of, there are more bands that sort of play, you know, what I might call heavy metal as yeah. opposed to like any other kind of metal. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but you know, we, we definitely got some, uh, some, we haven't actually played in Vancouver in a while, I guess I should say, but you know, for, for a while it was pretty tricky for us here. There wasn't a ton of support. Um, but, but luckily we do have our, our solid crew of, of pals and, uh, I got to give a shout out to the covenant festival and all the bands associated with that. They've been hugely supportive of, of us over the last uh, few years. 
And um, so, you know, so as of right now, you know, we're having a pretty good time here. There's um, venues are a bit hard to come by in a city that's, you know, kind of expensive and with a huge police presence and whatnot, like Vancouver is now. Yeah. But that's the case in any city, I guess. So, you know, I'm, I'm not one to complain. I like it here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, like, Vancouver is kind of like a mecca for the arts. Uh, it's the Western Canada's meeting point between America and Canada. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. you go out east and you're looking at, like, Toronto and Montreal, and you got yeah. a lot more of those spaces that are that are connected. Those borders are a lot easier to get through, right? Like, Toronto, Montreal, even Halifax, you got American bands that are rolling through all the time. Oh, yeah. You yeah. got American bands that will come up to Vancouver, stay for a couple of weeks, play a couple of shows and in Vancouver, <laughs> and then just yeah. leave, you know? We get American bands pretty often here. I guess my only real complaints about Vancouver, you know, is that it's, it's kind of a tricky place to tour from, right? Like, you can't – I know there's other places that are harder, of course, you know, but you can't go south unless you spring on the visas, and those are expensive as hell. You can you can't really go west except just to Victoria and maybe Nanaimo. You, it's hard to go north. Uh, there's not a lot of towns up north, and you can go east, but it's gonna you know it's gonna take you a 12 hour drive before you get to anywhere. Calgary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might be able to score a couple of shows on the way. Like you might be able to hit. <coughs> you can go to Kelowna and Penticton, but you know it's not like being in Europe or something where you can drive two and a half hours and be in another massive city with a huge art scene. You know, or even America. Like if you're in anywhere in the horseshoe of America. You got tons of huge art cities all over the place. So, I mean, I, all I got to say is I just wish they would change the damn border rules because it's total bullshit. Like, there's the idea that someone in some office in America had that if Canadian bands come down and play America, they're taking jobs away from Americans is ridiculous. Yeah. Every single time we've played America, we've, you know, like, given an opportunity for American bands to play with us, you know? We're like, we, we spend more money than we earn when we go on tour. Yeah. So we're down there springing on hotels and drinking, you know, paying for American beer and paying for American <laughs> restaurants. And the yeah. idea that we think we're somehow taking something from them is ridiculous. Well, and then they send they send Americans up here and they're like, yeah, man, we'll fast track you up there to go take some cash from Canadians. Like, it's the American yeah. way. Of it's, course, yeah, yeah. It's the American... But, I mean, the, the reality is that, you know, it's great when American bands come up here, right? Yeah. Because the more you can have spreading of culture and sharing That's, of art yeah the better of a scene you're gonna have the networking is what it's all about it's about like yeah. what we're doing it's about making that connection showing people like yeah there is stuff going on you know yep. so if mr fbi man is listening to this right now your system is screwed up change it let us canadians down south of the border so we can uh, spend our money in america yeah definitely <laughs> fucking rights man but that's the thing is like it's the american it's the Ameri I think it's against the American Constitution to give money away and not make money. Yeah, maybe I don't know what's the Constitution, <laughs> but I know that the laws weren't always the same. You know, I know Bastards. that in the past it was way easier for, for Canadian bands to go down and play there. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. It, it, it's just weird. It's not, it's not the same. It's not the same going both ways. It's easier yeah. for American bands than it is for yeah. Canadian bands, 100%. So... Yeah. My friends, my friend Paul here in the chat, he says, hey, Cam, wondering what you feel is the soul of old school inspired heavy metal, like, you know, the traditional heavy metal. The soul of old school inspired heavy metal. So when he says inspired, that seems to imply that he means like current bands, you know, or is he talking about like bands actually from the 80s? I think he just means as a whole, like that, that traditional, because when we, when we talk about heavy metal, sometimes we're talking about like Cannibal Corpse, we're talking about like, you know, those more extreme bands but when he's sure, saying yeah. when we say like old school metal we're talking about like traditional heavy metal leather metal yeah sure yeah yeah so i mean well in my i mean the bands that i worship when i'm listening to that kind of music i gotta think i think of accept right away except is one oh, of my yeah. all-time favorites they're just something about their their music you know it's heavy metal but it sounds like a machine it's just so concise and succinct and built so dun, sharply dun, and crisply dun, 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 dun. Um, of course i don't even need to say iron maiden and judas priest you know those are those are classics, but there's so much other stuff too. I mean, if obviously Black Sabbath is crucial and fundamental to all that. You mentioned Angel Witch. I mean, heck, I can start going through my my uh, my, my metal record collection right yeah. behind. Yeah, we got a rat. Yeah, buddy, rat. rat. You can't you can't um, say no to rat, man. Yes, yeah, so, you know we got Tokyo Blade. Hell and, yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, and then of course there's Rainbow Dio. I didn't even think of mentioning Dio. If anyone didn't get a chance to see the the recent Dio uh, documentary. That's fantastic. You got to check that out. I mean, I could go on all day and night. There's so many great classic heavy metal bands. If we're talking a little bit more more recently, like yeah. from uh, the bands that were active when I was kind of starting out, I've got to immediately shout out Cauldron. Oh, from, uh, hell yeah. Canto. They And they, they formed out of a band called Goathorn. And those guys are just the, the goddamn coolest. Like, 
I was watching them when I was, you know, you know, 16, 17, and it totally changed my life, man. Like just the way, because they had kind of a fresh take on it. It's different than Rainbow and stuff. Like the thing, I, one of the things I loved about Cauldron was that, <clears throat> so all those bands I just named kind of came from a time when heavy metal was, was like ostentatious. It was big. It was huge. It was making a lot of money. You know, rock stars were rich and famous, drove fancy cars. When Cauldron came along, it wasn't that way anymore. It was like similar kind of music. They loved all those bands, but they knew that heavy metal was now something, you know, it was like, it was, they knew it was a dead end. And that's what made it kind of like, um, kind of like romantic or sort of like, like tragic romantic to me. Like they knew that it was not something that was ever going to cause them to sort of succeed in life. It doesn't, heavy metal doesn't get you ahead. You know, the more money and time you put into it, I mean, you're going to, you'll get back out of it. You know, what do you find valuable for yourself? But it's not like, you know, it's not like you're going to be a huge star, you know, like, like the dudes in like Richie Blackmore or something like that. Yeah. So all their, all their lyrics kind of had this kind of, this kind of gloom and doom to it. Uh, it was totally different from like the extravagance of the eighties stuff. And that just really connected with me. Cause you know, I'm not an ostentatious guy. I'm not, ex- I never wanted to get into this to get rich or get chicks. I just wanted to, I just wanted to headbang. You know, that's why I'm here with yeah. With the buds, with the buds, you know, yeah, like yeah. <clears throat> instead of sitting around and drinking beers and talking about going out and having a good time, it's about going out and drinking beers and having a good time. Yeah. For sure, yeah, yeah. You know, and <clears throat> I got to say the same, like, <clears throat> these days when people start a band, even the bands that are big now, even the big, like, ones that are kind of, like, hitting the mainstream hard, you know, they're even saying the same thing. It's not to get into this style of music, this aggressive kind of music, whether it be the old school type or the new school type, you know, whether it be adopt adapting an old style, an old look, or trying to create something new, taking on those influences. And you're nobody's ever trying. The successful ones are never getting into it to try and be successful. They're getting into it to fulfill, to fulfill a desire, to fulfill a need for, for yeah. creativity, to feel, to fill an outlet. So, and even when you're successful, you still grind for years and you know, you don't have, there's no stability. Like nope. you always hear about people that have some moderate success. And so they blow all their money. They think it'll last forever, but it doesn't, you know, you're only as good as your latest album, you know? So if you, you might make a bit of, bit of money one year and then it'd be hard up the next year. Yep. You got, and that's the thing is like, you, that's why there's so many people that are going into like the content creation side and like, uh, you're from Vancouver. I don't, I don't obviously don't expect you to be involved with these bands, but there's people in Vancouver like Andrew Baina and stuff that are, that are creating, uh, communities around their music as well. And that involves, that also involves a whole lot more work than oh, just, God, yeah. just making music, you know? And yeah. some people just want to make some fucking goddamn music and bands like you are, are really like, Tragic Magic, the production quality on it is amazing. Like the way some of those bait, some of that bass comes through is just deadly. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I've, I'm a bass player at heart. That was my first instrument, so I was, you know, I don't, I don't want to play the. Well, it's not like I'm trying to make it overcomplicated, but when I hear parts, I usually hear bass parts with the guitar parts. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like I'm trying to play something fancy. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah, man. So uh, my buddy Paul's got another question, and he yeah. says. Uh, how do you keep yourself motivated to make music and continue this journey? I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't really look at it that way. Like whenever I, whenever there's something I like, if I've, you know, if I'm, if I've got some work emails to send off or, you know, some errand to do that, I don't really want to do, or maybe I got to fold my laundry. I always just see my guitar sitting there. And then next thing you know, I'm playing my guitar and, you know, I haven't folded the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the more other shit I have to do, the more I want to make music. Um, I, I guess the, the big thing is that, like, I, I also just listen to a shit ton of music. Like every day I listen to music all the time. I get home from work, I put on music. Uh, you know, I go for a run, I put on music. I'm making dinner, eating dinner, I'm listening to music. I'm always just kind of looking around online to see what, what new stuff is coming out. So I feel like, you know, your creativity is, is just kind of like an amalgamation of all this stuff that you've enjoyed throughout your life, you know? Mm-hmm. So if there's, if there's music you like, uh, then, then, then something will come out of you. And I kind of think it's your responsibility too. Like if you, if you really, if you really love music, then I don't think you, I don't think it's fair for you to just like sit around and expect other people to do it. You know, you don't have to be good, but you got to give it a try because otherwise someone else is going to do it and they're going to do a worse job than you could have done. Yeah. And then it's just going to start sucking more and it's your fault. Yeah, so exactly. So I guess it came around about, that's the way I put pressure on myself. I feel like if I don't do it, then who the hell is going to do it? I mean, millions of people obviously, but not exactly but it might the way I want suck. to be done. But it might 
fucking suck, man. And that's just not a risk we can take. Okay. (laughs) I totally agree. Well, in a sense, because like my band, personally, my band shtick is like, we suck and we know it, but we're right. going to have a better, we're going to, you're going to have a better time listening to us and hanging out with us than you are with anybody else. We fucking guarantee it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the music, music isn't enjoyable. So be aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you have, if you have fun at the show, that's three quarters of the battle. Yeah, everything <laughs> else involved with the band is enjoyable except yeah. the music. Huh? huh? We're trying out something new. The old switcheroo, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. So far. <laughs> So far, it's worked out okay. So far, it's worked yeah, out. Yeah, I heard the Sex Pistols did that, and they had a lot of success. <laughs> yeah, and now, now, like, now look at them, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we got another question in the chat from uh, a user called Altered Mover. Shout out Altered Mover. Hit follow, streaming every Monday and Thursday. He says, hey, Cam, how fun is it to see people jamming out to your music like that one guy enter the guitar on Instagram? I feel oh, yeah. like... <laughs> Shout out to enter the guitar. That was super cool. That doesn't happen often, but it happens once in a while. I heard that that lick that he played over our song, uh, Deceiver, and I was like, shit, we should have thought of that when we were originally recording it. It was, <laughs> it was like this sweet lick that came in between verses. Um, so, man, I, I love that stuff. When we put out our last album, there's this awesome dude... I can't remember his name right now, but he like transposed a bunch of our songs onto piano. Yeah. And he had like all the different so cool. parts and the vocal lines coming in. And it was just so damn cool. I mean, it's a massive, massive, huge honor for me whenever I hear someone else, like, you know, even just, you know, listening to my music or enjoying it in any way or like riffing on it or whatever. Cause I just think about the, the, the bands that I've, you know, this, when I hear a song and I'm like, Oh, that's such a cool riff. And I pick up my guitar and immediately start learning it. You know, it, if any, if someone else thinks about my band the way I think about that band, then God, I'm blown away. Hell yeah, man! Hell yeah, that's so cool. You, yeah, that's the type of music you make though. Like that's some. There's a lot going on in those recordings. Do you guys record that like self track and all that all in in house or what? No, so we we've worked. So we do we do demos of everything you know before before. But we uh, for the last three albums we've recorded with our buddy Felix Fung, who has a studio here in uh, New Westminster, BC called Little Red Sounds. And he's an awesome guy. He's um, we love working with him because he's, he's not like per se a metal producer. You know, he's a super experienced producer. He's done everything from like you know, movie soundtracks. You know, like soul bands. You know, jazz, like like garage rock, punk. You know, and all kinds of rock and stuff. So he 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 comes into it and he doesn't have these like preconceived notions of what you have to do to make a metal sound. You know, like there's a lot of guys that are like you get your fifty one fifty, you get your Marshall stack. You know, like replace the drums. And we always just wanted our stuff to sound like, you know, it's not like we're trying explicitly to like, you know, it's not like we don't like that stuff, but we always just wanted to not necessarily follow the rules of the mm-hmm. genre, you know, cause I feel like that's always kind of a dead end. Yes. You know, you want to at least try to do things your own way a little bit. So we just, you know, we just come in there with a little bit of a different gear and a little bit of a different outlook and, and then we make some heavy metal. Make that sound, man. Make that sound <laughs> yeah. out of whatever's available, you know? And like, that's, I, I, I know a lot of guys too that are, that are the traditional heads, you know, like I know, I know the guys from Riot City and uh, I partied with, I partied with Dustin a whole bunch and he, he loves getting under people's skin with that metal elitism and stuff, you know, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like you can't play anything that's, you can't play anything older than 84, you fucking clown, you know, like stuff like older that. But, 84, I'm surprised. But he's joking. He's totally, yeah, guy's yeah. totally joking. He's a great guy. And yeah, yeah, no, I know that guy. Yeah. To hassle. Great. To hassle those people, to hassle people about that is really awesome. And I really have a, but people get so chapped about it and they get sc- so scared by it. And they're like, yeah. metal elitism. And it's like, well, it's, it is kind of metal elitism, but it's not in the way that you think. You know, you got to get past those jokes. You got to get past those little digs and those ribs because like the respect is the music. When it comes to those, when it comes to the people who are really into it for the, for the actual music and a lot of the traditional stylists are. Because they, yeah. they model their lifestyle around it. They're always wearing leather. They always got a jacket, a bullet belt. Oh, yeah. They got piles of records behind yeah. them all the time, you know? But you got to get past that ribbing because there's too many people that come in and try and vulture the culture and yeah. then steal a little piece for themselves. And then before you know it, we like punk rock. Look at punk rock. We got all these people that are trying to sell punk vests online for like $200, yeah. $300, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know? And it's like... Psh- I'll go rip the sleeves off a Levi jacket and sew a t-shirt to the back of it. That's what it's all about, you know? Yeah, man. It's a, it's a really fine line because I feel like, you know, like I totally agree with you. Like when, when people just, when it's just for, about selling crap or whatever, I'm, I'm not a fan of that at all. But on the other side of it, when it, like I, 
I'm I'm pretty strongly like I feel like in heavy metal specifically, there's been this thing over the last like you know maybe 10, 15 years where it's like it's getting narrower and narrower. And like there's, you know, some guys will start a band. They're like, okay, this band's going to sound like, you know, I don't know, Judas Priest meets Motorhead or something like that. And it's like, that's cool. I love both those bands. And you can make an album, you can make maybe a couple albums that sound great that are like that. But then, then it's like, <clears throat> how do I say this? You know, eventually you're going to, you're going to run out. You're just going to dead end because there's only so much you can do with that specific sound. Yes. And it's like, we got those first gen bands like Judas Priest and Motorhead. And then we got second gen bands that are like a narrowing of that then what are the third gen bands going to be like a narrowing of that even further? And it's just, you're going to hit a, you're just going to hit like a cover. Band. A then it's cover bands. Then you're just playing, yeah. then you're just a cover band or a tribute act because you've, you've realized. And this is one thing I've seen is bands is a couple of bands. Uh, they, what they'll do is they'll get to a point, like you said, the narrowing where they want to play that style of music to two people and feel that feeling so much and yeah. they abandon writing original music and they're like, yeah. fuck it. We'll just play those fucking songs. Yep. And yep. then before I you... I mean, I love those songs too, but there's like, there's, that's the thing is there's so many, like I've always been a diehard, you know, die in the wool, heavy metal maniac since I was a teenager and I'll always will be, but it's not, that doesn't mean I only listen to heavy metal. You know, there's tons, there's so much cool music all over the place. Like there's millions of, of like great, I don't know. I just pulled it around the record. And it's killing joke. Like there's, oh, yeah. there's like so many sick bands of all kinds of genres. And like, if you're ignoring that shit, cause you, cause you have some identity where you only listen to heavy metal, then you're just, you're just screwing yourself over. Like really there's, yes. there's so much good stuff. And, and what, what I really believe in is like, take, you know, you listen to other styles and you find stuff that resonates with you with the style that you're trying to make. And then you, you bring that inspiration in. Like, it's not like I'm saying you're going to just like throw, throw a, a funk or a ska riff in the middle of a heavy metal song. But like you, you take what is relevant from other genres and you allow that to kind of broaden your horizons a little bit when you're writing heavy metal music. That's what I try and do. You fucking right, man. Killing Joke. I love Killing Joke. I yeah, really man. Do. Such a sick band. Really? I saw them play a few years ago, and it was genuinely frightening. Like, I, I can't remember the singer's name, but, like, he looked like he was going to jump off stage and strangle me. That is one, like, so Killing Joke is, like, post-punk fucking 80s fucking synth madness. So good. There's so many bands that I love. Like, and I'm a new metal freak. I love new metal. I, I love the fact that it fucking fucked so many people up and so many people hated it. But <laughs> yeah. that was a band that inspired that kind of music, you know, to oh. get heavier, oh, yeah. to get aggressive with those digital sounds. What's your favorite genre of music outside of the music that you create? Damn, I mean, that's like, it's whatever I'm listening to at the time, you know, but like yeah. lately I've been on a huge like soul and Motown kick. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I just feel like, especially those like those like '60s girl groups, like uh, you know the Supremes and stuff, Diana Ross. Like the 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 songwriting is just so like it's just it's beyond anything else because they there's no extra bullshit. Like they weren't writing those songs with egos in mind. They were writing it to write the best possible song. They want they needed to make a hit because they they needed to put dinner on the table. You know, like yeah. they weren't rich. They were just like kids. You know, like just kids trying to feed themselves. You know. Yeah. And so I feel like if you take all the like trying to be like a you know, trying to be like an intellectual, trying to be like artsy, like take all that shit out of the music and just try to write the best possible song. Then like, and just make it, you know, make it three minutes. No one's showing off. No one's playing anything unnecessary. The bands are so good because they literally play two shows a night, like fucking 300 days a year. That's what you get. Hell yeah, and, man. Uh, fucking right. And I respect that. The, the music back then too, because back then music was actually like a viable career yeah. Like that you, a job you could go out and apply for, you know, <clears throat> working in a radio station was respectable. The DJs of the time we were, they were like your neighborhood persona to aspire to. So when you could get on the radio constantly, cause everybody was listening to the radio, the way everybody's watching TV and sucked into their phone screens. Right. That mm -hmm. was the form of entertainment at the time. That was the form of connection. So bands back then, that was a job. That was like, okay, this is going to be my career. Parents weren't so much. Obviously, there were ones that were afraid of what kind of music you were going to go for. Like parents were like, oh, yeah, musician, you're going to be a gospel musician. Yeah, you're going to go get a record cut. You can go do that, that, that. They see, they could see how that was a viable option because of the way they grew up. So making that music back then, you go, you get your group together, you go down to the record shop, they know who's going to record it, and those people at the, re everything's getting recorded professionally, to a standard, to a dynamic, like a deadly standard for like 
uh, pop, like a shop, right? Like you go into a right, you don't have to find the perfect, the perfect engineer with that'll match your budget at the same time, right? Because there was a store down there that you could go, wh which had engineers to go record at. So you didn't yeah, have to, pros. yeah, you didn't have to worry about like, oh man, is this guy going to be good? Damn right. it. I, I sunk $3,000 into this. Is this guy going to be fucking good? Although, I mean, there were some shitty producers back then. That's for sure. Definitely. Like, you put on some records and they sound bad. Oh yeah. You know. <laughs> oh, definitely. But that's another thing too. You, you start building those connections and you get to the good ones. Right. But what, what I was, what I was getting at was, the, the the playing field was a lot more level in those times and a lot less level at the same time because there are yeah. so many people that were doing it as like, this is my nine to five job. So if you want yeah. this nine to five job, you got to apply for it and you got to do well, you know? Yeah. If there's too many people that are working this nine to five job, then there's no jobs left. Right. Yeah. Whereas with music now, it's like you throw, you can throw a whole bunch of music out there and go good big overnight or nobody's going to fucking notice it at all. That's the thing. Yeah. I like what you said. It's like, in some ways it's better in some ways it's worse. Cause like, you know, nowadays it's more democratic in the sense that anyone can, you know, get their, you know, get on their laptop and make like a decent sounding recording. Yeah. You know, you don't have to spend so much money in a studio, but at the same time, like there's no one that makes, no one makes money off music anymore. Like back then, you had thousands of people in every city were professional musicians. And they were, per and they were noticed and like on their, on their, like they could call themselves as a job title and on their yeah. taxes, you know, like musician on their taxes for this record company, this, this, yeah. whatever. It was an actual like fucking page. Here's your paycheck for the month, you yeah. know? We're yeah. on the bus, we're going on tour, and then we're recording. And you could, like, see for the year what you were doing because you were employed by this record label or you were employed yeah. by this band organization, right? Or hired gun through the management company or something. And it was a career path. But then it start you start to see where the... Uh, and this is, like, kind of where I stretch out into the conspiracy world. You start oh, yeah. to see the access, the access and the communication that these musicians have to their crowds right and there's a lot of conspiracies out there about the big musicians back in the 40s and 50s and 60s being total like government plants in order to to get the messages out to the masses uh there's a theory that paul mccartney was killed during the recording of abbey road and that they had to replace yeah, him Harry paul yeah, yeah 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 they had to replace him because if they didn't, they were afraid of the mass of suicides that was going to happen if yeah. once all of these young girls found out that Paul McCartney died. Yeah, I mean, that conspiracy seems a little rich to me. You know, you've seen Paul McCartney ever since then. He's sounded like Paul McCartney. He plays like Paul McCartney. And... Yeah, well, not no, not really. Paul McCartney played the opposite hand back in the 60s. He switched hands, and his eye color is different. He's always been a lefty. It switched. He fucking switched. He's He's still lefty, man. He's always been a lefty. <laughs> the, the, so the other proponent of it too is that he's an Ontario. He's a cop from Ontario because of okay. a, because of a picture in the Sergeant Pepper's okay, album yeah, sleep. Yeah. So obviously I'm right, and <laughs> and there's no way that you, with all the records behind you and all the knowledge of music, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> I mean, I never paid too close attention to his eye color. I couldn't tell you about that. No, ah, but I do ah. know he has fucking rules, and he plays bass like a madman. He does and he throw down. Those semitones as he's running up and down while he's singing, like to a totally different stuff. It's it's insane. His hands it's and totally his insane. yeah, and like you can't you can't cut. I I'm not a Beatles fan, but I'm never gonna oh, shit man. on. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge Beatles fan. I I love. There's a couple songs, Eleanor Rigby. Yeah, that yeah. song is insane. The way that I think it's one of the greatest songs ever written. A lot of the sounds, a lot of the sounds that they came out with, and a lot of the way that they did their melodies and their rhythms, and yeah. they matched those up were really fucking. I could totally understand why they were a groundbreaking band. But oh yeah, man. Same yeah. as Black Sabbath, though, too. Like I can totally yeah. understand while listening to new modern music, because I always try to to listen to old music with with new ears. You know. Yeah. Don't listen to this music thinking about what you heard about them and what drew you, drew you in to listen to them. Because when I first listened to Black Sabbath, it was because those are the fathers of heavy metal, and I'm into heavy metal now. So I'm trying to pull where my, my bands got the sound from instead of trying to think about where this band was on the soundscape of the time that they were releasing this music. And there's right. fucking nothing like it, man. 
Yeah, yeah. It's dark and it's sad. And I can imagine some people listening to it and turning it off and just being like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's happening to my soul right now? <laughs> oh, yeah. And the thing about Black Sabbath that some, I mean, a lot of people know this, I get some people don't know is that they were Christians. They were like, and they still are like devout, devout Christians. And their music was, you know, it was like that because they knew they were going to hell because they were sinners. You know, they weren't good kids. They were struggling in a, in a shitty small town and they were doing all kinds of nasty stuff. They knew they weren't supposed to be doing. And they wrote the devil's music and they knew they shouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm. And their parents told them not to do it. And it was, you know, and everyone told them not to do it, but, but they had to do it. And it, that music is about knowing that you're going to hell and knowing you're going to burn for eternity. And to me, you know, that's the heaviest shit I can imagine. Like you can come, you can come up and write songs about, you know, grinding up babies or whatever, but it's not half as heavy to yeah. me as that is. You know, those guys aren't grinding up fucking babies. Like, yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> because if they were, their music would be buried deep, 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 you know, like, yeah, yeah. Um, nobody. Hey, respect to Cannibal Corpse, man. Love them too, but hell yeah. You know, but those are family men. Man for me. Those are family men, you know, like, yeah, yeah. and I agree with you on that because there's some like digital music that I listen to too that's totally like, I don't want to call it EDM because nobody's dancing to this fucking shit, you know? Right. But it's heavy. It's heavier. Yeah. It's more intense. It's more brutal than a guy just tuning his guitar down as low as he can and then getting a breakdown yeah. in there, you yeah, know? Yeah. Lower and slower. <laughs> yeah, because, and personally, my band, we play heavy stuff, but we like to play fast. You know, mm-hmm. we like to get a different, a different feeling out of our music. Now, what's one of the fastest bands? Do you like old school thrash? Sure, yeah. What's one of the fastest bands that you like? The fastest bands. Um, damn, I'm thinking about something like Possessed or like, yeah, with, um, I don't know, like um, Morbid Angel or like even you know Slayers. Fast, like, I mean, I don't go, I don't tend to go for like the like, you know, like the technical death metal that just just no, about going you know, 300 not, BPM. Me like, neither. No, me neither. Not a fan of that. I'm a fan of like old school fast. Like I like yeah. I like Excel. I like Excel a lot. I like cool. uh, I like. Uh, as far as old school death metal goes, like Mutilator. Heck yeah. Bruharia, yeah. shit like that. Napalm Death is one of my favorites too. Yeah, they're sick. I got to see them a few years ago. It was awesome. They, they've they gone through a... They are one of those bands that's been around long enough to like... You can see their catalog change styles and adapt yeah. to new... To adapt to different things. And like... And I think that's so cool, man. I love seeing bands that do that. You know, as opposed to bands, like I was saying earlier, they just do one thing more narrow yeah. until they burn themselves out. Man, I love it when I see a band that just like... You know, I'm not talking about just like mindlessly jumping on trends. Yeah. But when a band is around for a while and they just grow and they like get into new stuff and try new try new things on, I think that's the coolest. Hell yeah. A hundred are great for that. And Judas Priest too. Judas Priest, for sure. Like, Rockerola was uh, was a fucking, that was a 70s fucking rock and roll album, you know? And then yeah. they start getting yep. heavier and heavier. And yeah, then they, totally heavier. And then they, they get into, like, uh, one of my favorite albums was Wings. And that really got me, like, digging into Judas Priest because it was it had classic sounds on it. And it had new, heavy, like, fast sounds on it. That wasn't, it was modern you know what i mean it wasn't just like yeah. okay you can tell that these guys are, are stuck in the 80s trying to pull trying to pull that into the to the mid 2000s right and yeah. judas priest for life man 100 percent. they just got into the rock and roll hall of fame too yeah i saw that this morning that's cool as hell i love that yeah and kk they even brought kk into it yep. and now a bunch of people are like all right so now He's back in the band. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. I don't know if I necessarily think that's going to happen, but uh, I don't think. Man, you know, I gotta say, what, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Richie Faulkner. Like, what a great replacement! Like that dude brought exactly what it needed. Yeah. And I just don't think that KK was uh, was able to do what Priest needed at that point. You know, all respect to KK. You know, he's obviously a legend, but man, Richie Faulkner really stepped up to the plate. He definitely he, did. Yeah. The look, the way he plays. Just yep. like he fits. Yep. And I really yep. don't think that Judas Priest are the type of people to just drop a guy on his ass like that. No, no, I don't think so. I think mm-hmm. that they're just going to ride it out and go for it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's what they do. They don't have any reason to, to not. They don't have any reason to keep changing shit up. No, no. I want to, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. I want to see 
what Ozzy does in the next couple of years too. Because yeah, I thought his new album was pretty cool, actually. Like I, I, I didn't particularly have high hopes for it, but like, man, it's got some bang and songs on it. And I love how Ozzy has, like, Ozzy has always been for the kids. Yeah, you know. And I respect that. Like, it's not like he just decided he was going to make some pompous ass pretentious music for like, you know, old blues lawyers or some shit like that. Like he's, he's all, he's, he always takes risks. His new album is like, it's risky. Like a lot of the, you know, metal elitists, like you're saying, they don't like it at all. But, but I think that's what Ozzy has always done. You know, he's yeah. always played with the brand newest sounds, done something kind of, dare I say, like a little bit avant-garde, a little bit weird or strange. And I think that's just great. Well, what people have to realize too is Ozzy is right at the precipice of fucking oblivion. He's, yeah. <laughs> he knows, he knows he's living on like not borrowed time anymore, stolen fucking time. And yep. he said himself, I'm going to go back out on the road and I'm not coming home again. And that's his plan. And yep. to release another album at this point in his life, that's that's first of all the person he's releasing it with is somebody who absolutely adores the whole back catalog through and through who knows mm -hmm. Ozzy's music 100% knows everybody he's worked with and respects it through and through and can also work really hard and work really fast without needing any sort of like backing guidance or anything you know yeah. Ozzy's I've seen a lot of the interviews and a lot of the the press runs that they did for this and He's the Ozzy's very coherent in the way he communicates this album, and he very yeah. much trusts this guy, and he was very much involved from start to finish yeah, on yeah. all of it. Yeah. So I'm stoked about it. I'm stoked about it because yeah. exactly like you said, he's 100% pushing out new stuff right to the end. Yeah, and he's going to probably die on the road, but you know, it's like I said about Black Sabbath, he's still a Christian. And he's dying on the road, and, and he's going straight to hell as far as he's concerned. So it's still, <laughs> he's still, it's still evil and heavy to me. Yeah, hell yeah, man. And if people can't if people can't respect and appreciate that, then well, it's like, come on. You're not the one who's in that situation. You gotta look at it a lot further than, Whoa, I want this kind of music and he's not making this kind of music anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as it's not as simple as that. It's not as shallow as that. Now, new bands. What's new bands right now that you're seeing come out that are kicking fucking ass? Specific sure. bands. Yeah, well, right away I got to talk about this band, Sonia. They just put out a, um, a new album. Uh, the first album's of Loud Arriver. And I guess it's a former member of the black metal band, uh, Absu, who, as I understand, was uh, uh, expelled from the band for, for being trans, which is pretty fucked up. What? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I've led to been led to believe on the internet. And... Uh, but I got to say, um, Sonia and Loud Arriver are way sicker than Absu has ever been. It's just so cool. It's my album of the year. Like, it's just a total standout record. I don't even know how to describe it. It's heavy. It's exciting. It's fast. The singing is great. Uh, the songwriting is killer. Uh, check it out if you haven't already. It's brand new, like a couple weeks old or something. Fuck yeah. I saw that, uh, I saw that on your guys', uh, when I was checking out your guys' Spotify today. I saw the artists, the attached artists, and Sonya was one of them. So was Sumerlands. Oh, yeah, cool. Sumerlands, yeah, that and the Sumerlands album is awesome too. I love that, love that album. Um, a band that I'm a big fan of um, is there that I think are not w known nearly well enough is uh, Second Son from Sweden. It's a uh, uh, Jacob or Jakob or however you say it if you're Swedish, who was formerly the drummer from Tribulation, and now he plays lead guitar and sings in Second Son. And man, I just find it to be like the most interesting honest music that i've ever heard it's so cool they've got i think they've got three albums out now and a couple of eps um highly recommended very rad fucking sweet yeah man i can keep going there's a band called night n-i-t-e although the one spelled n-i-g-h-t from uh sweden is also sick but the band called n-i-t-e from america it's the it's the guitarist scott from um from um high spirits uh and some other dudes and it's just it's totally cool it's like People have been calling it like blackened heavy metal because the vocals are kind of like black metal sounding. It's got that kind of black metal atmosphere, but it's got like the just like the heavy metal riffs and it's so sweet. I love it. Um, what else is cool and new? Oh, there's this band Zetra. Have you heard of Zetra from England? No, I haven't. Oh man, they're so cool. They're brand new. Uh, somehow I've heard about them. Actually, a friend of mine told me about them like I don't know, maybe six months ago, and they they only had like a couple songs up online. Uh, and since then, they just have suddenly kind of exploded. Like they got booked on Roadburn. They did a tour with um, 
with uh, Unto Others, which is another great band that I should mention that is new that I love. But but yeah, talking about Zetra, it sort of sounds like um, it's just a two piece. They got some electronic elements. It's kind of goth sounding, kind of like shoegaze sounding, kind of heavy metal sounding. Um, it's difficult to describe. Or it's you know it's super modern. It doesn't. There's no other bands that really sound like it, which is Fuck why yeah. I think it's so cool. I'm but it's catchy as hell out. and it's exciting. Fucking sweet. I'm checking them out for sure. That's fucking. <laughs> yeah, average. please do. Please do. Um, yeah, keep fucking yeah, rolling. Brothers, keep going. Uh, great. Uh, from Portland, they put out uh, their album, uh, uh, Strength, uh, I guess probably about a year ago, and it's awesome. And their album before that is great too. They're doing something totally keep fresh and heavy metal worth checking out. Fucking rights, man. Where's yeah. your... Where do you, where's your favorite place to pull music from? I know a lot of the traditional heavy metal guys, they love Europe. They just want, and there's, and I understand why, totally understand why. You get a lot of that more old school style, the doom, the fucking thrash. It, more, actually, the thrash is coming out of America right now. Yeah, but the doom yeah. and the stoner rock and the old school fuzz garage metal, that's coming out of Europe all the time. Yeah, and the, the classic heavy metal. And yeah, they got, I mean, Europe's great. Yeah, did, you, did you ask our favorite place to play? metal no what's your favorite place to uh, we're gonna get to that where's okay. your favorite place to like pull metal bands from where oh, like, yeah, like new bands oh heck man i mean i i don't know i don't i don't differentiate like if yeah. a cool band is a cool band like uh actually one band i'll, I'll shout out is um voltax from mexico nice. they were around since like oh i don't know like 2006 or maybe even earlier maybe even 2005 or four but they were doing like the whole like classic metal revival before almost anyone was and I just felt like they never got nearly as much props as they deserved because they're they're amazing. They they got a new I know they got a new album coming out <clears throat> pretty soon, but um, man, I just felt like it's just fucking racism, you know? Like people just don't pay attention as much because they're from Mexico instead of being from Sweden or whatever. Yeah, that's total bullshit. Yeah, there's a we got a we got some solid good buddies in Mexico in Shadow of Death, and they're cool. Uh, their new era thrash, like municipal waste style thrash. Okay, sweet. Yep. Super super rad guys, and I. I've same kind of vibe, you know, a lot of people don't pay attention and, and I, w I wouldn't say so much racism as them as much as the distance. They don't trust that young guys can travel that distance and still be like culpable and reliable. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, but I mean, everyone's traveling to like Sweden and Germany and stuff and that's farther. You know? Yeah, exactly. And they're like, oh, well, Europe's not that bad. And it's like, well, yeah. you're going overseas for Europe. You're just crossing a big chunk of land when it comes to Mexico. Yeah, exactly. Like right, you could you, general, you really ride the bus if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, ride a bicycle if it comes to it. It would be fucking absolutely terrible, but you know you, you could. Come on, <laughs> that's been done. Do a few shows on the way. Easy. Fucking rights, man. Um, I love it. I love bands from all over. I could I could really care less about where a band's from. I want it, and it surprises me a lot of the times when I hear a band and I'm like, oh. This band sounds like this kind of metal from this place, and then check, and they're they're not at all. They're not even close yeah. to there. And it's like, oh, sick! This band is a good band that's actually able to like. Not saying that bands from a place that sound like they're from that place are shitty, but <laughs> it's always surprising when you find a band from somewhere completely different than what their influences sound like. Right? Yeah. You, a band that can adapt like Norwegian black metal, but be from like. North Carolina is yep. <laughs> that that really gets me stoked, you know, because cool, yeah, I mean, I feel like nowadays it's kind of, a, you know, it's, it's more of a melting pot. It's not like it used to be kind of before the internet was as big when like you get specific scenes and specific sounds, you know, you get maybe one great band and some of their peers around them emulate and people from a thousand miles away just never really hear about it. Cause it doesn't maybe come and get on the radio, you know? Oh yeah. And so I do feel like it's kind of a loss that we don't really have that anymore. But obviously, it's a balance because it's amazing now that we can listen to bands from all over the world. And you know, I mean, overall, that's I'm sure it's cooler. <laughs> but like, but it is still a shame to not get those pockets of totally unique sounds. Yes, very true. I feel like a lot of people talk about gatekeeping now, and I feel like, yep. Yeah, see, I wish it was more talking about that kind of gatekeeping. Oh, gatekeeping! You mean like when you headbang to that band, gatekeeper? Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. I fucking love gatekeeping, bro. <laughs> but <clears throat> people talk about gatekeeping and they're like, well, you know, it's so people don't want you to do this and they don't want you to do this. And, you know, there's, if a band doesn't like you somewhere, you're probably not going to get big shows or going to get noticed. And it's like, well, I feel like gatekeeping back before the Internet became really prevalent. I feel like gatekeeping would have been a lot fucking worse because... The metal scene is a pretty closed group as it is even with the internet, right? Like, 
yeah. people who don't know somebody in a band but like metal and like going to see bands are still probably not really liable to go to a local show for a band that they don't know. You know probably what I not. mean? But back before the internet, you weren't getting to even know about a local underground show unless you knew somebody who was in a band. You yeah. know, if you wanted to play in a city and have people at your show, you had to know the people who were playing shows that had people at them. Pretty much, or know a good promoter or booker or something like it, that. Yeah, because yeah. if you didn't and you tried to go in there and you played a show the wrong way, not, not only was nobody going to come to your show, but you might get beat up. And yeah. you're going to get blacklisted because you didn't you didn't knock on the gate and say like, hey, can I come play a show here? You didn't ask for the permission. Whereas now, now you can rent somewhere out. You can get your Facebook friends and people who you know are your good friends in that area to come mm-hmm. to that show and have a good show, you know, before. And I remember this, too, because when I was when my first band came out, we were 2009 and it was just as like just as MySpace was starting to get the music, you could upload your music on there, and that's when people right. were really into it. Like I spent, I remember spending hours on MySpace checking out new bands. Yeah, man, me too. But checking out new bands that I could reach out to and talk to and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So we were always of the mind of like we got to make phone calls. We got to make phone calls. We got to send out text messages to as many people as we can. You know what I mean? Yeah, and. We did. We fucking did. But it was hard. You couldn't send... You send out a mass text to people back then. Like, my flip phone didn't send mass text messages. No, no. At the same time, though, you know, it was hard to spam. So when people got a message, maybe they took it a little more seriously. They did. They definitely did. Everybody I messaged... And we also weren't... There was not the chance to play shows all the time every weekend either. No. Like, no deal. We had parents and we had... Yeah, school and get your mom and dad to drive you down to the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My parents didn't really care as much as long as I was out of the house and not bugging yeah. them. Yeah. But that was exactly it. You know, you tell your friends that you're doing a show and they're like, wow. Especially in small towns, the small town where I was from, they're like, wow. We don't ever get to see this kind of stuff. If we do, yeah. like, Olds was cool, though, because we had Nazareth come play in Olds. We had, oh, that's cool. We had Three Dog Night come and play in Olds. We had yeah, Trooper and awesome. April Wine and shit like that. Oh, I love April Wine. Yeah. Class. They were deadly. They were so good. They, they fucking rolled around on that stage like they owned it. Like they were, everything was so effortless and tight. Yeah. It yeah, was. I'll bet. I'll bet. Man, oh, classic man. Legends. So good. Yeah. So good. But, but that was a rock and roll radio station that was doing that, right? Yep, but cool. what little did people know is you could rent the Legion. You could rent the Legion for a hundred dollars yep. and do whatever you wanted there, as long as you didn't wreck anything. And if yep. if anybody wanted to drink, you had to pay another hundred dollars, and they would open the bar for the night. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I, but I did that sometimes. And it got to be expensive. Like we'd get some places, and you know, you'd have to pay for security. You have yes. to pay for your PA. You know, you had to like um. You have to pay damages if anyone broke any shit. So, you know, if you're 16 and trying to put on an all ages show and you got to provide your own PA and everything like that, it's, man, man, you, that's, it's an expensive thing. It's yeah. not easy. It gets very discouraging very quickly because then you yeah. spend the whole time wondering if any of your friends are going to, it's like, well, now I can't have mosh pits. Yeah. And it's so, also, it's so easy to lose money on a show, you know, especially if like, if, if, ban, if a band's asking for a big guarantee and stuff like that. And you don't know who's going to come out and you know, you're just banking on it. Like I've known so many people that have lost so much money on shows, especially on, on uh, festivals too. Like you get a bit of money, you want to put on a fest, bring all your favorite bands over and then it just tanks. It happens all the time, you know? So I admire people who take that risk and man, thank goodness for the, for the promoters and the show bookers and the fest bookers. It's uh, that's why you see all the good fests tend to like last for, I don't know, maybe maybe five or maybe 10 years. If you're real lucky, not even that long, usually yeah because you burn out, you know, you work all year, half the time you lose thousands of dollars. Uh, Yeah. Bands are sometimes like, but, but man, thank you for doing that to everyone who's ever put on a festival. Hell yeah. (laughs) Shout out to loud as hell and Armstrong and decimate and intersect. Um, loud as hell. Uh, we're going on year 11 now. Awesome. And I'm hoping that this is the year that we get to bring some international acts back. Cool. Yeah. Because we've had we've had Goat Whore and cool. we've had Fit for an Autopsy and uh Loud as Hell's out in Drum Heller. 
Yeah, and, that's right. Drumheller's cool. Yeah, oh, now we're open air. We're an open air festival now too, which is really cool. But it's also really risky because the wind last year almost destroyed our stage. Oh my god, brutal. Yeah, it was nuts, but we pulled through. But uh, hopefully, some some international acts are coming back. I understand the risks applied with it. That's why there's no hasn't really been any complaints. But yeah. I agree with you, man. The festivals are a hard one because everybody knows they're losing money the first year. Yep. And then the second year, they're like, oh, well, maybe we can break even. And then when they don't break even, they're like, well, maybe we just made a couple of mistakes so we could try for next year. So these people are pushing through. Yeah. They're pushing through and they're t- they're taking a lot of hits for a lot of years. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, there's also the big stuff, cancellations, COVID, shit like that, right? So, yeah. A shout out to all the festival organizers because you're amazing all over the world, not just in Canada either. Yeah, thank you. As, as much as the bands, you guys make heavy metal happen. <laughs> fucking rights, fucking rights. So we are getting ready to wrap up this show, buddy. Is there anything that you think we missed or any shout outs you want to throw down, my friend? Heck, um, damn, good question. Let me take a little look at my list of bands I want to yell at. Um, Shout it up, Cauldron. Oh, man, I'll, I'll just say we got to – I mentioned Cauldron, how much of a big influence they were on us. We got Ian Chain, the guitarist from Cauldron, to do a guest solo on our album. Yeah. Uh, it's on the song A Ruined Garden. We were super stoked on that. That was really cool. Hell, yeah. Um, we did a couple of music videos, which was which was tons of fun. We did a video for uh, Ultraviolet with our buddy Sean Edwards. Um, he played in a band called Witchstone from Calgary, which we toured with, and they were sick. Sweet. Um, and we did another video with our friend uh, Scotty Gibson for the song Fever Dream, and she was amazing – brilliant director it was tons of fun to do that so just thanks huge thanks to all those people that that helped us put this album together and the videos and all the little parts and there's a million other people i could thank but uh I, you know i just feel so honored to have this community of people that believe in what we're doing and and want to spend their time to help us out hell yeah buddy it humbles me man it humbles me fucking rights man i really appreciate you as well it was so easy to jump in with you and get you to do this interview and uh Whatever helps bring a small spotlight on these small communities, man. That's what it's all about. That's why we do this. And I hope that both yeah. of us can continue to do this in our way and, you know, connect down the road again in the future, man. Because I hope so. Yeah. That's what it's all about, buddy. And this was a great chat. Thank you again so much for your time. And thank you so it's much. It's been a lot of fun chatting. Thanks for having me on. Oh, and one more thing is I just remembered Blood Ceremony from Toronto. They got a new album coming out real soon, and it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to listen to that. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm stoked. I got a whole list of bands for me that I'm going to go check out, man. Cool. Zetra know, is right off I'll say is, What I'm always saying these days, if you like our music or if you like heavy metal in general, go start a heavy metal band. You have to do it. It's your duty. Yeah, if you, good, you just have to do it. If you don't, then you are purposefully the reason why metal fucking sucks. Okay. If you don't go and start a fucking metal band, then it's your fault metal fucking sucks. Your that, fault. I'm doing my damn best. You like, gotta do your best as well. Me too. Me too. I'm not doing my best, but I'm doing something. Okay? <laughs> At least I'm fucking doing something. Hey, man, you're here. God. Holy. Okay. Thank you guys so much for jumping in, Cam. Thank you so much for doing this. It's greatly Thanks, appreciated. Hope we get to talk again soon. Hell yeah, buddy. You have a great night, and we will talk to you soon. You too. Later, amigo. Cheers, buddy. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Cam, for jumping in. That was fantastic. What a great guy. What a great guy he is. Um, So let's check the schedule here because we got some stuff happening. We got some more stuff happening. Thank you to the supporters again. Let's shout out the supporters one more time. Paul, Dan, high as fuck happy hour, dab Jesus and Gerd. Yaro, Odie, Leanne, Bert, Dan, Cat, Mouse, and Cap. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to be added to the supporter list, just send me a message. I'll let you know how. Um, this Thursday, we have Jess Escobar from Blood of the Phoenix out in Vancouver. I'm very stoked. Jess is awesome. She's been super, super nice. She's been really, really communicative. I'm going to get her to... I'm going to see if she wants to start writing some reviews for Trash Talk. So I'm, I'm working on a website as well. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I should call it. Should I call it natetrash.com? Should I call it trash talk with natetrash.com? Should I call it just trash.com? 
Like, I need some ideas here. Altered Mover, hit follow, buddy. We're streaming every Monday and Thursday. Hell yeah. So, what should I name the new website? I need to know. I'm going to run a contest for it, I think. Hey, thank you for that follow, buddy. Every Monday and Thursday, streaming it up. We do music reviews. We do reactions. We do cringe streams. We do spooky video streams. Uh, but yeah, buddy. Thanks for jumping in. Uh, if you guys want to name the website, though, there's going to be some requirements to get names in for the website. But I will guarantee you, if the if the name if your name is picked, there will be a substantial prize. Um, maybe not like substantial, substantial, but it will be a lot of merch. It'll be a lot of merch and maybe a couple of gift cards. I'll find out as we get this ball rolling. The website has been something I've thought about for a while, but I've never really been able to wrap my mind around because it's such a large undertaking and it's something that needs to be tended to on a regular basis. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, also, I want to do video game playthroughs. So if anybody wants me to play through a, a game, let me know and I'll buy it and we'll play it. We'll play it on stream. Uh, it can be stupid games. I like racing games, so I'm going to do a playthrough of Need for Speed Unbound when it comes out. But uh, yeah, you guys are right as hell. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you on Thursday. OG Silent Hill. Hey, you know what? I might do it. I might do it. Fucking right. <coughs> so yeah. Love you guys. You're all fantastic. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you real soon.